Buccaneers. Today we're going to unbox and review Key to the Kingdom by Restoration Games. And since this is from Restoration Games, they're known for restoring all the games that they make. So this game was based on a game with the same name that was made in 1990. This is for ages 7 and up. It's for 2 to 5 players and it takes 20 minutes to play. And on the back it says just another day in the kingdom. Pick up some magic beans from the sunbathing genie. Meet a boneless bed bug near the giant pumpkin. Snuck past a cyclops with the help of a spry spider. Hop in a teleporting whirlpool with my magic key. And defeated the demon king once and for all. All in a day's work when you're a hero. And this game includes two magical game boards, five hero figures, five hero dice, five hero cards, one demon king's castle board, one demon die, nine demon king's castle tokens, 40 item tokens, five magic item tokens, 36 <laughs> event cards, 15 key pieces, one adventure atlas, and one rule book, and a partridge in a pear tree. Now let's open the game. So here is the Demon King's castle board. And the tokens on the side. I wonder why the Demon King has so many raccoons. <laughs> Some more tokens. Here are a lot of artifacts such as axes, robes, swords, fire, and shield. And more tokens with the same well, with the same thing. And also on the side over here and all the punch out boards there are keys. That's why it's called Key to the Kingdom because we need one key to the kingdom. Here is the Advent Adventure Atlas. I feel like this game is gonna be kind of like a storytelling game or a somewhat storybook game. Uh, I already see a bunch of stories here, so I think each of these has its own its own quest. Okay, so there seems to be like thir thirteen around thirteen quests in here. So there's gonna be a variety of quests, and here's the rule book. There are a lot of pages, but at the same time, they also have a lot of pictures. So I think this might be a pretty easy game. The artwork in this is super good. This is from Restoration Games, and if you guys don't know, they also made Unmatch, which is my favorite game series, and that already has great art, which is probably why all their other games have great artwork too. Okay, now there's the game board. Let's open it. So there's one more game board after this, but here's what one of the game boards will look like. And then on the side you can there's you can attach more boards. That's why they have so many stories. On the side, see those things? Those are where you attach it. And on the back, it's an even bigger one. It is pretty big. So and there's also another board. You guys can see that? Can you see that? So yeah, you would put, and then here's where you connect it to the other board right here. Here comes the big one. So those are the game boards, uh, you can, uh, and you can put them together. But anyway, onto the figures and the dice. So starting with the figures, uh, well, there are five figures. There's a uh, orange, purple, green, white, and yellow figure. Here's the orange one, which seems like a no, a gnome, a uh, old gnome, or yeah. And over here, some of the sword. 
it's a girl with a sword. And then a fairy, a unicorn, person with a helmet. <laughs> so over here, all the heroes, all the heroes have their own dice. There's some of every color, and they all have numbers uh, from one to eight. And then here's one other die that looks super fancy. And I don't know who's for. It's a red and black die. Because it looks so cool. And then for the last thing in here, there are cards. So I kind of, so I think, okay, so over here, I think this is kind of going to be like uh, stuffed fables where uh, when you go up and meet someone, you uh, they will talk to you. And there's a lot of there's a lot of people that you can talk to here, like an offensive org, uh, a uh, uh, aloof archer, and so much. There's like al this a whole deck of cards. Oh, and over here are character cards. So I think each character has their own power. This is the Gnarl Gnome card. And I and his powers when you land on a lightning space, refresh two items before you draw a card. And the Novice Knight uh, power is you may use one additional item to modify your rules. We're gonna play the game and come back with our final thoughts. And we're back. The objective of this game is to collect all three pieces of the key that way you can fight the demon lord. On your turn, you can do one of two things. The first thing is you roll your die and you may modify your roll with an item. So since I rolled a two, I can only go here right now. But if I want to go here, I have to have three more. So I'm going to modify it by three and use the grappling hook. Then you move your figure that exact amount of spaces and then carry out the action that you land on. So on the spaces on the board, there could either be an adventure. And then you read the green book in here, which is an adventure book. And you see what happens. There's also a refresh space that if you land on it, the number that's on that space is the number of tiles that you can refresh. There's also an event space where you draw an event card and then you carry out the action. And also in the event space, whenever you roll a die and beat that number, usually they give you a companion with a special ability and also it can help you skip different spaces during your adventures. You can also land on the boring space, and it's very boring. It's very boring because nothing happens. You can also land on the demon die space. So basically what you do on the demon die space is you get to give the demon die, which has two zeros, one one, one two, one five, one seven, and one eleven. It's all around the board for all the numbers, and you get to give it to someone. But the bad thing about the space is after you give it to someone, they're probably going to give it to you after. Another space is the whirlpool, where once you land on that space, you don't have to use your exact movement to get to that space. But once you do land on it, the whole board opens up or closes. But when it opens up, everybody gets to go to the void except you. And also the map is basically like this in the beginning. And it goes opens up. The, the last space is the void space. And and all the heroes that were on your land before you open the whirlpool get sent to the void while you get to stay in the whirlpool. So basically in the void, it's very hard to get out of the void before you actually get to go explore the new land. And another action that you can take is a very good heroic nap. Which basically you waste your turn and you get a refresh five items if you do that. And once you collect all three pieces of the key, you get to go to the whirlpool and get teleported straight 
to the demon's palace. And the first stage will be a somewhat like off the land octopus. The second stage will be a bunch of raccoons. And then the third space will be a bunch, a bunch of clowns. And the last base is the demon. But on all of those spaces, you get to choose a tile or flip it over. And you must go get that number or higher. And you do it for all of that until you get to the demon, fighting the demon. Where you have to beat a total of 20 or more. But luckily, in that space and that space only, you can use as many modifications as you want. Oh, that's all I'm talking. In the first part that, the first time that I played this game, I got give, given the demon die for basically the whole game. But that's because I was playing with brother. I, I don't like playing with him. But, but when I played it the second time without brother, I, I, I did get the demon die, but I didn't get it as badly. Because sometimes in the demon die, there's a quest where you have to shout out a number. And, I shout, and they told me to shout out zero, so that's probably the best. So I shouted at zero, I got 11. And then the next time when I did it, I shout 11 and I got zero. So the first game wasn't that good, but the second game I actually won. I like the concept of the map actually being able to open up because then it adds so much quest. But in every single game of Key to the Kingdom, you you most definitely will open your map because the first stage does not have any red pieces to the key. So it only has blue and green. So you're definitely gonna have the map opened up. Maybe not both sides though, because some games you you might only have one side opened up and then the other side is closed. But but I like how the map opens. And also I like the concept of going to fight the demon after you collect all the dice. And also, there's a storybook that I like to read whenever you get a good quest. Oh, and I forgot, all the character, all five characters in here have special powers too. If this game looks fun to you, you can purchase this in the link in the description. Bye!